Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Fiji Pavilion in Bonn open for discussions. Case of the living dead continues and firm fine for failure to file tax returns. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. COP23 President and Prime Minister Wurenge Mbaini Marama officially opened the Fiji Pavilion in Bonn, Germany, declaring it a slice of home where numerous discussions will be held with the aim of fighting climate change. In addition, COP23 climate champion and Minister for Disaster Management Inia Seruratu launched the Fiji German Talanor Space, a platform where youth delegates, civil society organizations and private sector officials will head talks. Maggie Boyle reports. Cutting the ribbon on specifically designed Fijian spaces, the COP23 president was homestruck. Talk about a sense of being at home. It's as if a small slice of Fiji has been transplanted 16,000 kilometers across the world. The space not only to enhance deliberations, but also share the best of Fijian culture. The Fijian pavilion will be the setting for more than 80 side events, with a particular focus on the Pacific, and small island states like our own. It will also be a place to learn about how Fiji is responding to the challenges of climate change, to learn more about our cultural heritage, and to see Fijian craftspeople at work. Stamping Fijian made on Bonn territory, COP23 climate champion Inia Serorati launched another customized space. Make no mistake, climate change is the greatest threat humankind has ever faced. Without a truly collective effort, we have no chance of achieving our ambitious target of limiting the rise in global temperature to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Seruratu highlighting the importance of sharing lessons learned. You will hear about innovative technologies to reduce emissions here in Europe and also here from Pacific youths taking climate action in their small island communities. You will discuss climate change and gender perspectives here in the Rhine and also from the Pacific. The COP23 meetings continue today with the pavilion to host the UN Climate Resilience Initiative. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. COP23 President and Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama has commended the partnership of the German government in hosting the global climate meeting. Mbaini Marama says it's the spirit of partnership that will guide the talks and speak volumes to the grand coalition needed for global climate action. Maggie Boyle reports. Thank you. It's a partnership that has allowed Fiji to stage the COP23 in Germany. The President candid about his appreciation. In this case, competency without uh, the assistance of uh, a bigger sister brother. In this case, uh, uh, Germany came to our aid, thanks to you. And uh, we all know that without your assistance, without your help, we you wouldn't be able to be here. With close to 200 countries represented by more than 20,000 delegates, COP23's sheer size made it untenable for Fiji to host in country. This open dialogue. This sharing of stories and experiences, hopes and dreams, fears and anxieties, and especially solutions and commitments can make a huge difference in developing the practical response to climate change. Eden also imploring delegates to look beyond their own regions for the commonalities that climate change unearths. We have relatively little land, yet as science pushes agriculture to be ever more productive, we face loss of productivity. The reefs, forests and oceans that we depend on for our livelihoods are threatened. But of course, climate change knows no boundaries. Further, faster, together is the overarching theme that will frame the COP23 deliberations over the next 12 days. Maggie Boyle, FBC News.
Two main zones make up the venues for the COP23 talks currently underway in Bonn, Germany. The Bonn Zone and the Buller Zone are hosting hundreds of events and meetings during the two-week conference. Eleanor Trangaviu has the details. The UN's World Conference Center in Bonn is the center of the Buller Zone. The zone accommodates the accreditation area, plenary halls, conference rooms, the media center, press conference rooms and delegation offices and is where the main negotiations are taking place. Up there in the Mbula zone, there's no doubt that there is power in the room to make rules and make a difference. But friends, don't underestimate the power down here. The Bond zone, however, located beside the River Rhine, is where the action is. It hosts side events, CSO's exhibition booths, country pavilions, action and observer meeting rooms and a big Talanoa space. I intend to spend a good deal of time down here in this community, a community of action and a community of commitment. As my predecessor, the president of COP22 wisely said this morning, negotiations are important, but actions are more important. We're in the action zone and already you can feel that it's a place of energy and purpose. The Fiji Pavilion, located in the Bond Zone, has attracted many visitors. It consists of mbures and a meeting space, as well as displays of traditional Fijian artifacts. There is also daily entertainment from the Fiji Police Force at the main center. Friends, this is a place for enthusiasm and conviction. People are meeting here to get things done and also dance. There is ingenuity and innovation all around us. Over 20,000 participants and visitors are expected to pass through the two zones in the two-week conference. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. There is no record at the CWM hospital of 59-year-old Jane Orion being pronounced dead by doctor on March 19, 2013. CWM's hospital consultant physician, Dr. William May, testified to this in the High Court today in relation to a case whereby patient is seeking compensation based on the claim that he was declared dead by doctor after being administered a medication he was allergic to. Pranita Prakash reports. During the cross-examination, it was revealed that following the events of March 2013, Narayan made a request for a full medical report on the nature of the treatment and the type of injection he was administered. CWM Hospital's consultant physician, Dr. William May, confirmed that he prepared a report after being instructed by his superiors on May 29, 2014, a year after the incident. Dr. May says he did not know why there was a delay. In 2009, Narayan was referred to the CWM hospital where he was given penicillin which allegedly caused an allergic reaction. However, this information was not included in the final report from the hospital. Dr. May, however, clarified that the information was in the outpatient folder and the report he prepared was based only on Narayan's admission folder. Narayan's lawyer argued that those details were specifically omitted to protect the doctor who attended to Narayan in 2013. The lawyer also questioned Dr. May on whether he was present in the hospital the day the events took place. The lawyer also argued on whether it is possible that the doctor who attended Narayan did not put those details on record. Dr. May then said he was not present there and there was also no records of Narayan being pronounced dead. The High Court judge will rule on the matter on January 29th. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Suva Magistrates Court has convicted Coral Coast Builders Limited for failing to file income tax returns from 2008 to 2014. The company pleaded guilty to seven counts of failing to file income tax returns as required under the Income Tax Act and Tax Administration Act 2009. While sentencing the company, resident magistrates said tax returns had not been lodged despite numerous reminders by the commissioner for eight consecutive years. The company has been fined $1,500 for each count. Fiji Revenue and Customs Service Chief Executive Viswanath Thus says this case is an example of how non-compliant taxpayers will be dealt with under the law. 
The 80-day nationwide bus industry review consultations came to an end today. The Independent Bus Fare Review Committee Chair Joel Abraham says customer experience is one of the major issues raised. He adds in light of this, the committee will be rolling out a self-assessment survey. Abraham says through this survey, the public will be able to share their experiences and suggest areas of improvement. He says the survey will also be conducted at the bus stations. We'll also be uh, emailing this out to enable people to do a self-survey as well and send the and submit the forms back. So all done through an e-platform. So there are multiple channels that have been opened up and I urge the members of the public that you must come in and give your views given that this is quite important, this is going to have a national impact. Still to come, overcrowding continues to be an issue for corrections and Thai-level milk supply decreases. Stay with us. Bula FM number 2 and seri Overcrowding of prisons will continue to be an issue for the Fiji Correction Service. However, they're adamant that they have put measures in place to ensure all inmates are taken care of. Felipe Naikaso has more. It's an issue that will be faced by the Fiji Correction Service now and in future. The construction of some of our correctional centers have uh, given us that flexibility and that uh, opportunity to, to cater for some of the overcrowding issues that we, we have faced in the past and will do so in the future. The issue is also not new for the correction service who are looking at ways of ensuring that everyone is treated equally in prison. Fiji Correction Service has continuously reported the increase of prison population throughout the years. It is something, something that is not within the control of the service Fiji Correction Service will always accept the fact that those who have been sentenced to, to the prisons will have to be incarcerated regardless of the, if there is space or not. The Fiji Correction Service also remains optimistic that overcrowding of prisons can one day be solved. There's a strong message that we want to send out to the youths of the country, to our young ones in the country, you know, there's more to life than coming to prison. Overcrowding issues in prisons were also a major topic of discussion for other countries who presented during the Asia-Pacific Correctional Administrators Conference currently held in Nandi. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC News. There is a huge decline of milk supply to the Fiji Dairy Limited by members of the Northland Farmers Cooperative in Thailevu. Cooperative Chair Hirde Lakan says the industry used to supply up to 12 million litres annually, but it has dropped to around 8 million litres. Savara Tambo reports this was highlighted during the AGM in Korovot today. According to the Farmers Cooperative, one factor is the decrease in dairy cattle due to bovine and brucellosis, but they'd also like to see a lower price for cattle feed and high farm gate price for milk. The business is all about returns, it's all about cost, so what we should do is to improve the returns, which may be the price, uh, we should reduce the cost, which could be the cost of feeds, cost of inputs, no? Feed costs seem to keep creeping up, and that's one of the biggest costs. So that's one of the areas that we have to look at as to how to reduce our costs. Fiji Cooperative Dairy Company Limited Chief Executive Sachida Nath says that the issue have been raised at the national level and also to other stakeholders. In June, July this year, we did get a five cents increment in the raw milk price, but that still has a deficit in terms of our, our cost of production. So we're still negotiating and hopefully, hopefully we will make up some good improvements in terms of price. Northland Farmers Cooperative bulk producer members supply their milk direct to the factory, while the smallholder suppliers supply their raw material through the FCDCL from this drilling centre. Sabera Tambua, FBC News.
Attorney General and Minister responsible for climate change, Aya Said Kayyum, has once again stressed that there is no demarcation between development funds and adaption funds for a developing country like Fiji. Speaking at the European Investment Bank side event, Said Kayyum talked about how one half of Viti Levu is currently facing a drought, while on the other half there were regular rainfall. So if you're able to take that approach, then obviously sustainable development also includes uh, the provision of things such as water, uh, better sewage systems. Now, what? why has it suddenly been exacerbated? Obviously, it's because of erratic climate uh, uh, patterns. Meanwhile, the AG also participated in WWF session on ABC's of Green Sovereign Bond, where he talked about the importance of the Green Bond and how Fiji intends to capitalize on it. We targeted a five-year uh, bond. Uh, which is to the tune of about $13 million. The coupon rate is 4%. And then we have a 13-year maturity with 6.3%, which is the longer term. So we, we split it up to be able to you know, attract different uh, investors and make it a lot more attractive for them. The Fijian COP presidency and the UNFCCC secretariat have declared there will be zero tolerance of sexual harassment at the UN climate talks in Bonn this year. This report from Eleanor Torangaiviu, who is in Bonn, Germany. United Nations Framework Convention of Climate Change Secretariat has strongly committed to its stance of zero tolerance of sexual harassment at the UN climate talks currently underway in Bonn, Germany. For the first time in any climate talks, the daily program issued by the Secretariat includes a notice of its zero harassment policy and how to report it. We have um, uh, also um, appointed, uh, assigned the gender focal point that is currently in the Secretariat, from within the Secretariat, to listen to any, um, uh, any situation that can, could arise. Executive Secretary Patricia Espinosa says this is a very sensitive issue as almost everyone is affected by sexual harassment. People in my own family, women in my family that have suffered um, in different circumstances and I, I believe in today's world it's difficult to find a family that has not somebody that has suffered some kind of harassment. Fiji's chief negotiator Nazat Shamim Khan says sexual harassment is a barrier to the advancement of women and in many cases it remains unreported. People don't come forward, they don't complain and they don't, one of the reasons why they don't is because there are no frameworks in place to deal with it. So I'm really happy to hear that UNFCCC does have a framework, they have a focal point, as well as a, a, um, a UN security uh, responder. The notice on the daily program states that the UNFCCC Secretariat and COP23 organizers have a zero tolerance for any form of harassment, including sexual harassment, and will deal with any such complaints promptly. Eleanor Turangaviu, FBC News. The Ministry of Ithauke Affairs is reviewing the Child Protection Program contextual package for Ithauke communities. Ithauke Affairs Deputy Secretary Simoni Waimbuta says the feedback from villages during the review will map the way forward in helping reduce violence against children. Sainiani Mboila reports. The ministry claims most child abuse happens in villages and they're working to target the grassroots level to eliminate this. MTA, MTA worked on existing child protection manuals and contextualized it for the Itaukei communities. We all contributed towards this manual. It was contextualized for the Itaukei communities. The ministry also produced and printed the manuals in the Itaukei language and training was carried out in the 22 districts of Nanronga and also in the Kaunrome. UNICEF Child Protection Officer Laisani Peterson says the increase in child abuse cases is also a reminder for all stakeholders to review their services. This is the best place to start because experience and research has told us that we could do more with less. When there will be a high influx of people reporting incidents of child abuse, we have to also strengthen our services and also legislation. Wayne Buddha says 23 out of the 1,171 villages in Fiji have familiarized themselves with the child protection program and will be giving their views on the book in the next three days. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. 
Ahead in sports with Jamie Boos for Paralympians, but up next is Rachel with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Demand leads to new products. And in growing Fiji, agriculture show gets underway in Nandi. Stay with us. Welcome back in a bit to cater for the growing demand for ice cream. Goodman Fielders Tucker's Ice Cream will be bringing in more flavors by mid-2018. The company over the last year has flooded the market with various flavored ice creams. The general manager says there's been mixed reaction from customers, but they generally like the new product. We're very happy with the results. Uh, some of the flavors did very well, um, some less so. But overall, it's been good for us, it's been good for our retailers, uh, it's been good for our market share. So uh, it's given us newfound confidence to um, give, an off, uh, you know, give an offering to the more adventurous uh, Fijian consumer. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Thanks, Rachel. Let's have a look at our national economy. This week, the Reserve Bank of Fiji released its economic review for the month of October. The Fijian economy is now projected to expand by 4.2% in 2017. Visitor arrivals noted an annual growth of 6.6% cumulative to September. Both cane and sugar production recorded a considerable turnaround. However, gold production remained low. A pickup was noted in net vet and pay as you earn collections, indicating strong consumption activity. Investment outcomes also remained positive. Inflation was 2.6% in October. Our foreign reserves closed at 2,409.2 <coughs> million for the month, which is sufficient to cover 5.8 months of retained imports of goods and non-factor services. And that's all from me now. Thanks, Sharon. Looking at today's exchange rates and foreign currencies in the Fijian dollar, there was a general drop across the rates today with the Fijian dollar weakening against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close at 3.13 and 47 cents, while the Australian and New Zealand dollar strengthened to close at 61 cents and 67 cents, and the PNG Kina was down to close at 1.33. As for the commodities market, oil prices were down to close at 57 to a barrel. Gold closed at 1,276 per ounce, and silver closed at 1699 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Western Division Agriculture Show got underway at Korovolu Park in Nandi today. The annual show themed Climate Smart Agriculture for Fiji aims to gather interest in the sector. President Major General Retired Chochi Konrote says Western farmers can use this as a platform to their advantage as basis for farming ventures and pa further partnership with tourism service providers. The event provides an opportunity for hotels to explore the abundance of fresh and processed agricultural products within the division. It is also an ideal time for local chefs to explore the contemporary Fijian cuisine and to choose more local, fresh, healthy and nutritious produce. And that's business this evening, now to sports. Here's Jamie. Thanks Rachel and good evening in sports tonight. A build up to the Oceania Sevens this weekend. And Boxing Club making a difference in Newtown. This and more coming up. I am Pramila I Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I'm Sandhya Naira Refugi. I'm listening to Mirchi FM. is hot. I love Mirchi FM. We've been talking about Mirchi FM. 
The New Zealand men's side is hoping to get some quality matches at the Oceania Sevens this weekend. The All Black Sevens had a disappointing season in the last World Series, finishing fourth. New coach Clark Laidlaw has named a number of experienced players for the two-day tournament at Subas NZ Stadium and says they're hoping to take on the hosts this weekend. It's, uh, I think it's the first time we've been here playing as a team, so we're all excited playing Fiji, and Fiji would be great if we got that opportunity to, to play against Fiji. So. Again, that'd be a really exciting uh, game for us. The Cook Islands women's team hopes to put into practice the lessons learnt at the Central Coast Sevens last month. The fairly new squad that's still trying to find its rhythm simply hopes to perform its best this weekend. Yeroni Tuinuku reports. The Central Coast Sevens has been a learning platform for the Cooks. Central Coast was a hard tournament for us. Um, it was the first time we were together in a long time, and we have um, we've lost a few of our starting um, uh, playmakers, and so that was difficult. So um, Central Coast for us was just about learning. The Cook Islands women's team has a mixture of players, which will develop in time. Getting new people into the system and playing the different positions, and so as coaches, we learn a lot and came away with a lot of learnings from that tournament and so we're excited to put um, those learnings into play here and um, really maximise our potential because we didn't do that in Central Coast. However, Papua New Guinea women's rugby team will try and impress fans despite the financial setbacks they are facing. The national sport of PNG and it uh, makes it quite difficult to, for other sports such as us to uh, get proper funding from the government as well as uh, corporate support uh, because most coin is all um, tied up to rugby league and it's made a bit harder especially this year with the World Cup. Australia is the defending champion of the women's division and Fiji will try and defend the men's title this weekend. The Oceania Rugby Sevens tournament will be held on Friday and Saturday at the NZ Stadium in Suva. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Solomon Islands men's team wants to cause a few upsets at this year's tournament. The team had a disappointing finish at last, last year's event when it lost to Minos Nauru, but have come better prepared for this year's competition. Red Deo has more. They made a name for themselves on the soccer field and this bunch of players is looking to do the same in the oval shaped ball game. I believe that our preparation can determine something come for and make a sum upset to these big teams. There are not many rugby players in the Solomon Islands but the side is hopeful of taking some pride back with them. Yeah, we believe that we work from our mistakes and come back we believe that we can make a very improvement. Preparations have gone well and the team is confident. It's preparation. Our preparation, I think all the country have a reason to come here. It means that everyone is prepared, everyone is ready for the tournament. Solomon Islands is pulled with Australia and Tonga at the two-day meet. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Fiji Airways flying Fijians coach John McKee says there's a lot of competition for the halfback's position in his starting lineup for the match against Italy. Nicola, we know Nicola, look, he's, he's back playing at Glasgow, which I think is um, a very good move, move for him. It's interesting uh, this season he's been playing for them predominantly on the wing. So, you know, we, we know what a good halfback he is. Um, but, you know, there's, um, you know, I think we've got, you know, some good halfbacks there now, you know, like, like Henry came off, um, you know, played very well at the back end of the series, particularly against Samoa. You know, Frank, um, really, really good young and coming halfbacks. The Flying Fijians play Italy at 3 a.m. on Sunday. Portofone Fiji Mbati coach Mick Potter has named an unchanged side to play Italy at the Rugby League World Cup on Friday. Captain Kevin Nangama leads from the fullbacks position, while Suliasi Vunivalu and Marcelo Montoya will be on the wings. Tane Milna and Aquilo Wate make up the centres, while Jared Hain and Henry Raiwilui complete the halves combination. Newtown Boxing Club aims to make a difference in its neighbourhood after receiving boxing equipment from government. The club was formed last year and has 29 registered members who work together to reduce crime and help unemployed youths. Club coach Tony Vakaloloma says the new equipment will boost their development. 
started uh, Newtown Boxing Club and he was uh, going good now. He was a couple of uh, boys that we started with, you know, they end up to the Fiji final for this year. And four of them uh, had bronze and one of them had silver. This was a good starting for us. Eh? That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and a new media. Twitter to allow tweets of up to 280 characters. Details after the break. In your media, Twitter is about to get more words. Most tweets will now fit 280 characters, up from 140. The new limit will roll out to Twitter users in almost all 40 languages Twitter supports. So weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Sunshine and light breezes all around the country and since it's mango season, I guess some of us spent today wishing we were in the cool shades of the mango tree, where at least I was. Looking at the west, the sun was just smiling there, not a single drop of rain was noticed. Great day for tourists. Eastwards from Pekhabara Suva, a scorchy day with lots of sun. And up north, cloudy and very warm. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. And for the tides, high tide tonight will be at 11.01 with low tide at 5.19. See the beauty of sunrise at 6.24. For tomorrow, hot and humid for sure with moderate rain. Tomorrow's temps, Suba and Sabu Sabu will be the coolest with highs of 28 degrees. And looking further on to Friday, we're going to experience wet conditions. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji and Pulse today, we asked... Are you aware of what prostate cancer is? Yes, of course. Uh, to all men, we have to man up and uh, to try to stop uh, prostate cancer. Yes, I know. Yes, I'm aware of prostate cancer. Yes, I'm aware of prostate. I don't know what is, uh, prostate cancer is, but it should be awareness of it. Not really, like... As I'm a female and prostate cancer is um, and it is a disease that affects mostly boys, I'm really not that aware of it. No, it's the uh, first time to me to hear. But prostate cancer is something new to me and I would like to know more about it. Recapping the main stories, Fiji Pavilion in Bonn open for discussions, case of the living dead continues, and firm fined for failure to file tax returns. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should the Pacific Islands have a team in the National Rugby League competition in Australia? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day taken at Raunivi Village in Ryan was taken by Hilson Moormore. We'd like to encourage all our viewers to send us more pictures of our beautiful Fiji. Email it through to fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Good night. Talita, <laughs> <laughs>
barrong na Radio Fijuan nandumibiti. Na Radio Fijuan nandumibiti na bonga ni BNN.